a trio of disturbances we're tracking at this hour, and one of them entering an area where it could organize and strengthen into a impactful storm for us here in the United States. But will that happen? We have the latest models, the latest forecast, plus a meteorologist Q&A coming up here on Tracking the Tropics. Hey there, folks. JB Buno here with you live for our regular Wednesday episode here of Tracking the Tropics, live on a lot of different apps, websites, and social media platforms, including on the WFLA Facebook page in Tampa. KXAN, hello there to you folks in Austin, Texas, WKRG, Mobile, Alabama, WMBB, Panama City, and, of course, WIAT in Birmingham, Alabama, where we're so grateful to have CBS 42 Chief Meteorologist Ashley Gann joining us there on the right side of your screen. We're going to be talking to Ashley quite a bit here, especially about Invest 99L there, right there on the left side of your screen near me. So we're going to be talking about this trio of systems here. And for the latest on that trio of systems, tracking the tropics, meteorologist Amanda Holly standing by here with the very latest. Again, you can use hashtag HeyJB, hashtag HeyAshley, or hashtag HeyAmanda here in the Facebook Live comment section for the meteorologist Q&A that we have coming up here, Amanda, in just a few minutes' time. Yeah, you can ask your questions in the comments. I'm going to go through all the details about these three systems, and then we'll get to those comments. And uh, you can ask them to us, and we'll talk to you on screen and hopefully answer as many questions as we can. But first, I want to talk about the trio of potential systems that we are watching. None of them have names yet. We're, they're all just areas of investigation, basically. Invest 99L, Invest 97L, and Invest 98L. And they're kind of scattered about the Atlantic Basin. The closest one, though, Invest 99L. We're going to be watching very closely over the next few days because some of our longer range models do bring this into the Gulf of Mexico and have it becoming a storm potentially impacting the United States within the next six, maybe seven days. So we're going to be watching this one very closely. Right now, it's not a storm. It's a tropical wave that's kind of situated near Colombia and the, the South Central Caribbean Sea here. You can see over the next five, excuse me, the next two days, it has a 50% chance of developing into a storm and has a pretty good chance of developing at least in the next five days as well. We're likely going to see a tropical depression with this form by the end of the week. It's in a rather favorable environment and it's going to move into an even more favorable environment for strengthening. So you can see the system is right here itself, the showers and thunderstorms that we're watching. That's the actual tropical wave. But as it moves farther to the west here and then potentially north of Central America and toward the Yucatan Peninsula, this is where we're going to be watching for that potential development. Again, would likely become a tropical depression first by the end of the week, moving over the Yucatan Peninsula by the weekend on Saturday, and then into the Gulf of Mexico by Sunday. So these are the latest forecast models with with it. Uh, and you can see there are several. They, most of them bring it off to the northwest over the next few days. This is, I posited it Saturday here, potentially moving toward the Yucatan Peninsula. Then as we get into the second half of the weekend and into early next week, most of the models bring it into the Gulf of Mexico at least to the central Gulf of Mexico. And some of our longer range models continue this path off to the north and potentially northwest, impacting the western Gulf of Mexico states there. Uh, so we are going to be watching this one very closely. Now, the range of strengths is wide on, on many of the models. The GFS, the American model, has it a little bit stronger as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. The European model keeps it a little bit weaker. So this is, again, something we're going to be watching over the next five days. And if you have family and friends that live along the Gulf Coast, you'll want to make sure they're watching this as well. This is one particular run of the American model here. You can see we have a closed isobar. That means uh, it is a, a closed area of low pressure. This is at this point we would see may maybe a tropical depression, maybe a very weak tropical storm moving toward the Yucatan Peninsula in the Western Caribbean Sea here on Saturday. And then as I advance it a little bit more, it, you can see those, we get a lot more of those closed circles. That means we have a little bit stronger of a storm. You can see all the rain associated with it as well. And this is by Sunday evening. So again, most of the models continue the system off to the north in, somewhere along the western Gulf Coast. So something we're going to be watching very closely as we head into the next few days. And I want to bring in Ashley here because, you know, we've got very warm water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico right now. And the environment it does look a little bit more favorable in the western uh, Gulf of Mexico for this to strengthen. Yeah, and this is exactly the time of year when we especially are focused on the Gulf because that's when the sea surface temperatures are the warmest. We're nearing our peak of the season, which is September the 10th. And just to put some historical perspective on this, 
Hurricane Katrina was just really starting to ramp up on August the 25th, uh, it, back when we were, were talking about Hurricane Katrina back in the early 2000s. So keep in mind, it made landfall August 29th in Louisiana. We know that very well in New Orleans. Uh, not that this storm is going to take that same path, but I think that it's always something that we need to be watchful of, very concerned about especially if landfall could be on the southwest side of the Gulf of Mexico there. There could be big impacts along that western Gulf coast, anywhere from Texas through Louisiana. Alabama, that's where I'm the chief meteorologist at CBS 42 here. And being on that eastern side, it's something that definitely has piqued our interest and something we're going to be tracking very closely. Because again, as you mentioned, those favorable conditions, we've got those warm sea surface temperatures, which is basically that fuel that that storm needs to uh, kind of grow and, and stay alive as it moves back into the waters in the Gulf. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this this could be the first, you know, major system of the uh, 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Not saying it's going to be, but this is uh, this is the first storm, I guess, that some of our longer range models are projecting to be a little bit on the stronger side. Some of them, though, like I said, keep it a little bit weaker. So that's good news. But we do have favorable conditions in the Gulf of Mexico for that to strengthen as it moves through the Gulf of Mexico. So 99 L is going to be the one to watch as we head into the next five days. If you have family and friends that live along the Gulf Coast here, Louisiana, Alabama, even into to Texas, uh, you'll want to make sure they're staying aware of this storm as it, it develops and progresses over the next few days. Now, most of the models keep it in the western Gulf of Mexico, so that's good if you live in the Tampa Bay area, but we're going to be watching it here as well because, you know, it's a, five days out and things can change. We've seen that already this season. I do want to talk about the other two storms that are out there, two systems invest 98L that is a tropical wave, came off the coast of Africa a couple days ago, has a 20% chance of developing over the next two days, a 30% chance over the next five days. Uh, you can see it's got a generally a, a nice swirl to it here, some showers and thunderstorms associated with it, but the upper level winds in this area are on the stronger side at this point. Looks like they may even get a little bit stronger as we head into the weekend. So this one, even if it does develop into a tropical depression, maybe a weak tropical storm, looks like it's going to stay out in the, in the Atlantic as well and not become anything very strong because as we get into the weekend, it does look like those winds kind of pick up a little bit. So those are the forecast models for 98L. Again, this is the one that's kind of in between Africa and the Caribbean islands here in the south central Atlantic. It's going to kind of curve off to the north through the middle of next week. So we might be talking about that one for quite some time. We'll keep an eye on it, but it doesn't look like that one's going to get any closer to the United States. The last one, 97L, is about 800 miles southeast of Bermuda. Here's the island of Bermuda, obviously the United States farther west. And you can see there's some showers and thunderstorms associated with this one as well. The upper level winds in this particular area, strong at the moment, but as it moves off to the north and kind of curves back to the east, looks like those upper level winds are going to weaken a little bit and it could have a, a potential to develop over the next five days. That's why you see the chance there at 80%. So we'll be watching this one, but even the forecast models with this particular invest 97 L here kind of recurve it back off to the north and then off to the east as well staying away from the United States two systems that we're certainly watching we'll keep an eye on them but it looks like 97 97 L and 98 L will stay away we are going to be watching 99 L now the next name on the list, we've gone through all the way through H. Henri was the last one, of course, made landfall in the northeast there. Ida is the next name, and Julian is the name after that. Then we are followed by Kate. So something to uh, keep an eye on. If you hear those names, that's why we're tracking those three potential areas of developing. And this is not unusual. We talked about it a couple times on this stream already. August, September, even into October, very busy months. We've got warm waters. Typically, the environment, the upper levels of the atmosphere, they get a little bit more favorable for that development and we have 61 percent of all named storms form in August and September. Of course the statistical peak there is September 10th so we're coming up on that very quickly but we do have another little uptick in activity in October which us here in Florida we have to worry about that as well. So that's an update kind of the rundown for you of Invest 99L, 98L and 97L. The three potential tropical systems that we are watching but 99L guys is going to be the one to watch over the next five days.
Tracking the Tropics, meteorologist Amanda Holly here with the latest. She's going to come sit down with us for our meteorologist Q&A here alongside, of course, CBS 42 Chief Meteorologist joining us from Birmingham, Alabama. Roll Tide, Ashley Gann joining us here, everybody, on the right side of your screen. Might get a... eagle for me. I'm uh -oh. sorry. I had to interject. I'm an Auburn girl. Oh, okay, an Auburn girl. <laughs> All right, so my days going back to Alabama. I'm used to saying Roll Tide to just about everybody, unless you're an Auburn fan, of course. <laughs> Ashley joining us from Birmingham, folks. Oh, we're going to get to your question here in the Facebook Live comment section. Of course, if you've been with us here before on Track in the Tropics, you know how this works. Activating now the bottom of your screen, you'll see the meteorologist Q&A. If you use hashtag hey Ashley, hashtag hey JB, or hashtag hey Amanda, we can get to some of your comments coming in here in the Facebook Live comment section. We're tapping into a lot of different Facebook pages, especially uh, the ones here that are that could be uh, impacted here maybe over the next 10 or so days here as we continue to monitor uh, 99L. Talking about folks as far as uh, uh, you know, KXAN in Austin, Texas, WMBB, Panama City in the Panhandle area, WKRG, Mobile. We're get to we're gonna get to a lot of these Facebook uh, questions coming in. As long as you use one of those hashtags, that's how we are able to animate them here on screen. And Ashley, we'll start here with this one from Barbara. Uh, hashtag Hey Amanda, uh, worried in Mississippi. Of course, a little bit closer to where you are there uh, in Alabama. And uh, no reason to panic yet. No reason to worry yet. This is something that we are monitoring. It's not even a name system yet, not even really a tropical depression or a tropical wave just yet, but it's something that we're monitoring very closely. Yeah, and as we track this storm, especially being in portions of Mississippi, I think anyone along the central and western Gulf of Mexico from Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama at least needs to have a plan of action in place. Again, Shavy mentioned, we don't need to fret just yet. We need to just watch this storm, watch where it's going, and just kind of know where we are going to be looking at that outlook in the coming days. So we've got quite a bit of runway as far as time goes, and that time is actually going to give us better opportunity for preparation. Preparation is key in these storms because uh, we really just don't want anyone to say it struck without warning. So as long as we do our part in getting that communication out there for now, let's just uh, all agree. We, we kind of know that there's some disagreement in the models. We can see that on our screen there. Um, and we'll be tracking this. I think we'll really start to need, uh, need to ramp up how vigilant we are once this emerges into the Gulf of Mexico after it crosses over or past the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, let's get to this one here, and we now have, of course, Tracking the Tropics meteorologist uh, Amanda Holly joining us here. You see both of our meteorologists here on the right side of your screen. Really, let's get some questions going for hashtag hey Amanda, hashtag hey Ashley here. And I, this one, I'm going to have to run by you here, Amanda, because uh, I, I don't see this one too often. Tina Shelton here asking hashtag hey Amanda, is this going to affect NM at all? And uh, is, uh, is that North... Is that New Mexico? I, I, I mean, Mexico. I would assume that New Mexico. I don't think we've ever, in the years we've been doing Tracking the Tropics, I don't think we've ever out. had a question asking about New Mexico impacts here. Pretty wild. It's a, it's a great question. Uh, you know, we do have potential systems that kind of move north, and then some of that moisture could affect New Mexico, but not this system, actually. Long-range models, again, this is just one particular model, and I stop it here for a reason, just because, uh, again, it's just one model, and there's a wide range of possibilities after this, uh, but most of the models are in good agreement on it, moving into the central Gulf of Mexico by late in the weekend. After this, they take it a little bit farther to the north, and then it actually recurves back out east east away from New Mexico. So I don't think I don't think this one will be affecting you guys. Let's get to this one here and I want to get Ashley both of you guys uh, to answer this one here from Linda Sarge hashtag hey Amanda will Saharan dust play a factor always talking about good old Saharan dust here on, on tracking the tropics. Ashley uh, what, what do we have here as far as Saharan dust? Yeah well and interestingly we actually have some Saharan dust we're uh, kind of working with in the environment right now. And I think that's why we see the uh, the storms kind of segmented the way that they are in the Atlantic and in the Western Caribbean right now. And in between those tropical systems, we have some Saharan dust. Keep in mind, Saharan dust, when it gets wrapped around some of these systems, it can stabilize and weaken these storms. However, I think in this particular case, that Saharan dust is going to be thinned out quite a bit as it reaches into the Gulf. So I think that the overriding favorable conditions of the warm sea surface temperatures and weaker shear aloft are going to drive the storm to strengthen more than we're going to see the Saharan dust really taking over and um, kind of weakening this storm. I think the Saharan dust will have much more impact on the storm that's moving off that African wave than it is going to be impacting 
the storm system that's going to be moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, we have dust overhead right now here in the Tampa Bay area. It's been over the past couple of days. And it's been very that that very hazy. You know, we can we can definitely see it, and we're feeling the effects right now. Uh, but I think that this wave is going to kind of move away before it will it could impact 99L. So yeah, I agree with you, Ashley. I don't I don't think it's going to have an impact, unfortunately, on this one. Always yep. love the Saharan dust because we get those sunsets, right? Always talking about the great yeah. sunsets that we have produced by Saharan dust. Hey, Brody uh, Wesson, hashtag hey Ashley, saying, hey Ashley, it's fixing to be a uh, a busy uh, few weeks. Yeah, as Amanda noted, Ashley, the statistical peak of hurricane season coming up here in in September, and so it could be a busy few weeks for us here on on tracking the tropics, and of course for our stations across the group here, including yours in Birmingham. Yeah, for sure. And Brody is one of our faithful weather watchers. So thank you for joining us on this feed today, Brody. And uh, just a little Southern translation when folks down South say it's fixing to be something, that's just a word for it's about to be. So for anyone wondering, that's a little Southern translation for you. But yeah, it will be a couple of busy weeks. And Brody, I hope that you're going to be out there giving us some weather reports from where you are in South Alabama. And especially for Alabamians, as you can see on the model on your screen, Alabama is going to be on the right hand side of the storm. So it's definitely something that's going to impact us. Some people don't realize that Alabama does have a coast, one of the most beautiful beaches in know Florida, rivals Florida. But um, Alabama and those emerald water, emerald green waters down there. So we are definitely watching very closely these storms that are going to be moving in over the next you know few weeks. Again, peak season, September 10th. Gulf Shores, Orange Beach. If you've never Beautiful. been, you guys, you're, you're missing out. The Alabama Gulf Coast, a, a special, special place. Uh, let's get to, uh, how about this one here from, from Kayla Phillips, hashtag AJB. Do you think it's going to affect Massachusetts? Well, and, you know, she specifies Pittsfield, but I think that we can just speak here as far as Massachusetts as a whole, as a state, really the entire northeastern United States. Amanda, this isn't necessarily something that we have to be watching for as far as 99L or really any of the systems that we're tracking uh, here th towards the end of August. But it's interesting because we just had Henri th roll through the New England area. Yeah, I'm sure that everyone in the Northeast is kind of on high alert at this point because you don't get impacted by those tropical systems very often. But Henri was one of those that stayed strong as it moved off to the north and um, you guys got impacted by it. However, uh, with this 99L, with 97L, with 98L, I don't think that you, you guys are going to be impacted by a tropical system per se. Now, as 99L moves off to the north and dissipates as a tropical system, that moisture could move north and then off to the east, which you could get some additional rainfall from that. But that's very very far out in the future at this point. So uh, too early to say if, if you would be directly impacted by any of the tropical moisture, but you will not be impacted by a tropical system. Let's get some of the questions going from some of our other Facebook pages here, folks. Again, JB Buno, Ashley Gann, Amanda Holly here with you. Use any of the hashtags here on your screen for our meteorologist Q&A. Tapping into a lot of different Facebook pages here, especially in the Gulf Coast area, the southern, southeastern United States, including where Ashley's joining us from, WIAT CBS 42's Facebook page in Birmingham, uh, Alabama. And let's get to this one here. I'm going to throw this one your way, Ashley, from uh, Adriana Rios here from KVEO's Facebook page. That's in Brownsville. Texas down there, way down there in southern Texas. Uh, hashtag came in. Which areas can be affected in Louisiana here? So obviously way too early to, to pinpoint some specific areas in Louisiana where we could see impacts, but it just goes to show that Texas Gulf Coast, Louisiana Gulf Coast, Mississippi Gulf Coast, I mean, these are all areas that are on alert here as far as 99L. Yeah, and one of the things I would say, anybody that's in any of the coastal areas from Brownsville, Texas, all the way through Beaumont, the coastal uh, Louisiana coast, Mississippi and Alabama, just go ahead and have that plan kind of ready in case you need to enact that plan, because obviously this is a fluid situation. And then as this emerges into the Gulf of Mexico, we'll know at least pinpointing a little bit better where the landfall will be made. But my biggest suggestion right now, as we track these storms in the coming days, make sure that we're very well aware where the center of circulation is. If your home, if your community lies on the right hand side of that center of circulation, that's where we could see more of the water inundation. We could see surf levels rising. We could see higher storm surges. Flooding obviously becomes one of the key issues there, not to mention the winds. That's where the winds will be strongest as they move inland. And that's where we can also see those spin up tornadoes. So that's something that's very, that's what really is most important that I want people to take away from this messaging today is know where you are and know where you are in relation to the storm. Don't just focus on the landfall because it's really communities just to the east of that 
that could really be in dangerous path. And we're talking for 50 to 100 miles east or right of that center of circulation. So that's what's really the key here. So as we watch this evolve over the next few days and get into early next week, that's going to be really important to know your geography, know which county you live in, know your city, and know where you are in relationship to the center of circulation. Very key there. How about this? I'm going to bring you guys both in here for this next one from Cassandra. And we get this question a lot pertaining to every system that we track as far as tracking the tropics. Hashtag AJB. Uh, is it expected to become a hurricane? Of course, referring to 99L. Uh, uh, Amanda, uh, hurricane odds here, uh, perhaps Ida would be the next name storm on the list, right? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely not out of the question with this one. Like I said, there are a wide range of strengths with some of our longer range forecast models. Some of them make it a stronger storm. Well, uh, you know, that is that is a possibility of this being a, a stronger, more impactful system in the Gulf of Mexico. And some of our models, they keep it on the weaker side as well. But as Ashley and I were talking about earlier, you know, those sea surface temperatures, they're very warm. The upper level winds are going to be, you know, a little bit lighter, allowing 99L, whatever it is, as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico to kind of use those warmer waters and fuel itself to become a little bit stronger. So is 99L going to become a hurricane? The odds of that, I would say, are pretty good, are pretty good at this point with some of our longer range models. I, I would agree with that, Amanda. And I also say, hey, we're we're hitting that peak heating of the of the season, and that's why we start to see the numbers of tropical systems ramping up, basically between August 20th and then peaking at around September the 10th. So just keep that in mind. In the Gulf waters are the warmest that they generally are all year long right now. So there's plenty of energy in those uh, Gulf waters to help stimulate and help to create more longevity for these storms as well. Again, Ashley Gann, Amanda Holly here with us in our meteorologist Q&A. Again, we're always engaging a new digital audience. Use any of the hashtags that you have here on your screen, and we can feature your comment here. And another five or so, maybe six minutes here on Tracking the Tropics with our two esteemed meteorologists joining us. Of course, Amanda Holly here with us in Tampa, and Ashley Gann joining us from Birmingham, Alabama. We always want to make this very, very clear to folks that we're always here to, to keep you aware, to keep you in the know, to let you know what's going on as far as the Atlantic hurricane season, to keep you educated here as far as how storms form, where they're going to form, and what areas of our country are going to really, what areas of the world are going to be impacted. So when we when we take questions, sometimes people immediately go from zero to 100, and we want to make sure that you're aware, especially with something like 99L, there's still many, many days and still some uh, some some fair amount of uncertainty here as far as where the system is going to go and how strong it's going to become. So I, I preface that. Uh, with this question here, Kimberly here asking from KXAN's Facebook page, joining us from Austin, Texas, hashtag, hey, Amanda, will this affect Austin, Texas like Harvey? So you, immediately you mention a, a name system like Harvey and you think about just all the devastation that occurred from Harvey. And while we are always very, very mindful here, Amanda, on tracking the tropics as to what a major storm can produce, we want to just kind of preface this conversation by saying that we're not anywhere near that territory at this time as far as comparing a system like this to Harvey. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately just way too early to say if, if this could be a Harvey, if this will just be a tropical storm moving ashore, um, you know, if it will even impact you know, the, the Houston area. It's much too early to say, uh, but this will ha this will evolve relatively quickly because we could see impacts as early as, you know, early next week. So, um, you know, pay attention. It's too early to say if it will be a Harvey or not. Unfortunately, I just we just don't have that information for you. But could this be an impactful storm? Yes. We just don't know where yet. We got a and lot. To echo Amanda's point too. We there's still a lot of uncertainty there. But we always have to remember Harvey stopped. It yes. literally stopped moving. And so the chances of that happening is probably not going to be as great with this. We still can't tell you all of the impacts and the variables that are going to happen once this thing makes landfall. So we can't can't say with you know 100% certainty yes or no right now. But I think that's one of the interesting caveats with Harvey, historically speaking, is that storm just really parked itself over Houston and just dumped loads and loads of rain. So kind of to get all those dynamics to line back up again to produce that same system. I think is still pretty much on the low end, but we could still get a fair amount of flooding rain out of this system too, because it's going to be moving right out of the Gulf and it will have very little interaction with land between the Yucatan and final landfall in the lower 48 somewhere. 
as I was mentioning earlier, tapping into a lot of Facebook pages. Hello there to all the folks. KTVE, Ark Lemis, uh, joining us, everybody from uh, a lot of folks joining us from Louisiana. Hello there to you on Tracking the Tropics. Uh, Charlene Gibson uh, joining us in that Facebook Live comment section. Hashtag hey Amanda, what about Shreveport, Louisiana? And then uh, Ashley, uh, I'm going to throw this these comments your way is just focusing here on Louisiana. Uh, Casey Myers, hashtag hey Amanda, what about uh, North Louisiana? Will it hit us? And if so... Uh, when so of course Louisiana especially after the 2020 hurricane season Ashley uh, always mindful of, of systems that form because you can have a system that begins as something like 99L and become a cat 1 cat 2 cat 3 hurricane in a hurry absolutely so quickly just the timeline I would say later this weekend into early next week we really need to keep a very focused watch on where this storm is heading because that's going to give you enough time to make a plan and then if you need to take action to enact that plan I would also be very mindful of getting watches and warnings, have a reliable way to get weather information, whether it be from your local emergency management officials, because if there are any types of evacuations, especially in cities closer to the coastlines, and then they'll need to head north. Sometimes there's other protocols for people in the northern part of the state, how to handle that influx of people as well. Uh, these, these states along the coast do have good plans when enacted well. So just making sure that you you take those seriously, that's something else that's very important. So uh, as far as pinpointing specific locations like Shreveport or Baton Rouge or Reston, uh, I think what's most important now is just to know where you are, know where the storm is, and then know where you are in relationship to that center of circulation. Because again, if you're on the right-hand side, you're going to be faced with more of the effects from the threats like flooding rainfall, spin up tornadoes, and then as you get closer to the coast, you're then going to be dealing with the elevated storm surge and the surf that's going to be going up as well. So again, know where your city is. And as this gets closer, so from a timeline perspective, I would say keep a watch live late late this weekend into early next week. Ashley, we're going to come right back to you here for, uh, for a question from KVEO from Texas. Rich uh, Stubbs Jr. here, hashtag hey Ashley, aren't there other models showing it hitting deep south Texas? And I think that there are some spaghetti plots that take it uh, Ashley, uh, in that direction, as we have here for you next to you here. Yeah, and we look at about 30 different spaghetti plots. So we could definitely spend, I would love to spend about three hours going over all of this. I'm sure none of you out there in the world want to do that, though. That's why we try to, you know, sum it up as best as we can here. There are models, and you can even see on your screen, one of those kind of bringing it through the Galveston area, uh, I believe, and that's going to be in or just outside of Houston, actually. So uh, that's one model that, that's projecting that. So we've got everything from Brownsville to, you know, basically Louisiana is where these models stretch from. So what we'll do is I think that we'll have a much better idea once this gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it's going to interact with the Yucatan Peninsula. I think that's going to really help us define that final trajectory. Right now, there's so much interaction with land. The models are having a challenging time placing this at its final destination, if that makes sense. So it's it's going to likely make an initial landfall. What will be interesting, though, is if it skirts just to the east of Cancun, which is on the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula, if it skirts just to the east of that and it splits that gap between Cuba and Mexico there, it may not interact as much with land. So that's that's one option. But most other models are bringing it across the Yucatan Peninsula. And then when it gets into the Gulf, we'll have a much better idea of how this thing will veer. Is it going to head due west? Is it going to curve to the north? Or is it going to bear to the northeast and then impact more of the central Gulf? So something to watch. And again, we'll really have much more heightened awareness once this thing crosses over the Yucatan Peninsula. A lot better uh, weather information to use at that time, too. Yeah, we're going to be monitoring those models over the next several days, really the next week here. Uh, a great question, and perhaps we can bring up the sea surface temperature uh, graphic here, Amanda, for this next question from Dan coming from WFLA's Facebook page. A great question. Hashtag hey Amanda. Hashtag hey Ashley. Earlier you showed a red map showing the Gulf temperatures are these temperatures above normal and how much warmer will it get uh, you know amanda would know best she was out on uh, on our gulf waters this weekend uh cue the cue the smile here uh, from amanda who had a great fishing trip this past weekend in our wonderful uh, gulf coast area of tampa bay and, and so uh, amanda right on cue here the sea surface temperatures yeah, they're warm, uh, but I don't believe they are actually above average. We've seen much warmer Gulf water temperatures than this uh, in previous years. However, 
they're plenty warm enough to sustain and uh, build a tropical system. So, you know, you don't always need above average sea surface temperatures to, um, you know, make a system very strong. These are plenty warm enough. They have lots of moisture that can evaporate and uh, fuel that system to strengthen. So 85 degrees, you know, in the Western Gulf, 86, even there up uh, closer along the coast. And I'm sure right along the coast, there are plenty of low 90s too um, that, that that system will use to strengthen as we head into the weekend. Yeah, fun fact. So the warmest sea surface temperature right now is in Galveston, Texas. It's 88.7. So it's flirting with that 90 degree yeah. mark right there in Galveston. That's the warmest water, but it's shallow. So that's why it's so warm. And to Amanda's point, it only takes sea surface temperatures at 80 degrees to sustain development. I like to use the example when you have gas in your car, your tank may be half full, but it still can drive your car. Whether your tank is half full, a quarter full, or you have a full tank, you can still drive your car. It's just a matter of course how long can you drive your car on a full tank, half a tank or a quarter of a tank? So we have fuel there. We've got plenty of fuel. It's just a matter of how much fuel and how long will that fuel last to get to that storm to strengthen uh, to pot potentially a hurricane. So that's what we're looking at. So coastal Texas, though, hottest waters in the Gulf right now. Yeah, and I was actually just doing a little bit of analysis um, uh, and, and looking up some of those anomalies. And it actually, the Caribbean Sea, so just south of Cuba there where you see the 83, 84 degrees, that's actually below normal for this time of year. And as Ashley was just saying, the very warmest temperatures are right along the uh, the eastern Texas coastline and the Louisiana coastline. And they're running about a degree, maybe two degrees above normal right now. So not nothing outrageous, nothing that we haven't seen before, but plenty warm enough to sustain that tropical development. We're getting closer to the final questions we're going to be taking here, but Dave, David's here is, is right on cue, so I want to I kind of bring this question to the conversation about sea surface temperatures. David here asking, hashtag Amanda, I find that often the strength forecasts, and we, man, we talk about this on Track in the Tropics all the time as far as intensity forecasts, are off because the Gulf of Mexico is so dang warm. Why aren't Gulf temperatures factored in more for the strength forecasts for hurricanes? Oh, they are. <laughs> um, they absolutely are. Uh, you know, all of these little details go into each and every one of the forecast models, but it's because there are so many parameters that are going into each of these forecast models and every one of them take into account something a little bit different uh, to see what it's going to do in the longer term. So the, the sea surface temperatures are, are very much factored in, but it's a very well-known issue that, you know, intensity forecasts, they're difficult right now. The National Hurricane Center rates it, uh, you know, about a category off, up or below. So uh, above or below the, the current forecast thinking. It's just sometimes it's it's very difficult to forecast the rapid intensification processes that happen. Uh, you know, some, some of those processes, they're still working on why they happen, which is uh, kind of interesting because, you know, those researchers, the hurricane hunters, they fly in to get all of that data and they're using that to actually see what's happening inside the hurricane to go through a rapid intensification process. So uh, kind of interesting things that are, you know, still being researched at the National Hurricane Center. I talked to them earlier this year and, and last year as well about what they're doing and, and they've got researchers on it with every single storm that forms. And I mean, I'm so glad you brought that up just about how many variables go into these forecasts and these predictions and, and all the models. Um, and if you get really bored one day and want to go back, I, my thesis in grad school was basically taking into account the Saffir Simpson scale and how it appears to the public that it's only based on wind speed for the right. intensity. But to get to that point, we have to use all these underlying variables. But maybe moving forward, we could use a different scale because cities of impact anything from the bathymetry, that's this, the shape of the, the sea surface floor or the, the sea floor, you know, that could impact. Uh, storm. So, I mean, there's so many variables that we could really spend hours and days and years kind of dissecting. So I think they've taken the most broad and in, in, in using that so that more we can talk in more layman speech about it. But you're absolutely right. So many variables go into uh, to weather because weather's yeah. 3D. Weather's not just 2D. So we're right. not talking about just what happens on our surface. We've got to be talking about what, what happens 60, 70, 80,000 feet in the atmosphere as well. And, and, and at different layers, things are 
very, very different. Right now we have some dry air in the mid-levels of our atmosphere here over Tampa, and it just all of those little things affect it differently. And the forecast models that you see on your screen here, that's just a few that we look at. You, yeah. you know, Ashley talked about there, there are over 30. I mean, just with our two main longer range models, the American model, the, the GFS, we get ensembles, and that's a, a suite of, of 30 to 50 models yeah. that we get. And that's just one run. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot that goes into it. We just kind of simplify it for you guys at home. Our, our last question that we're going to take here uh, on Track in the Tropics, Tom Columbati, hashtag A. Amanda. Uh, isn't this the end of the Africa ones and now the, the Caribbean? And, and uh, we talk all the time about, of course, the activity that we get in the Atlantic Hurricane Basin as far as, uh, as, far as uh, act, you know, activity from Africa uh, what do we say here for this question here for, uh, for from Tom? So right now, Tom, um, in August and September, we call the, we call it the main development region. Uh, it's basically uh, all of these tropical waves that are coming off the coast of Africa. They're moving off to the west toward the United States. Uh, they're kind of you know rounding that high pressure that we talk about the Bermuda mm -hmm. High. The development region, though, right now in in August and September is actually just this. We we look at the tropical waves uh, and and we we also look in the Caribbean for that development as well. Those tropical waves come off the coast of Africa about every three to five days. Some of them are more robust. Some of them are weaker. Some of them have a better chance of developing, uh, depending on maybe how much dust is around them as well. But this is uh, the main development region. This is the time that we look at these tropical waves. And also to that note, too, uh, keep in mind, too, that longevity doesn't always equal intensity. We can have short-lived storms that can intensify rapidly, and we can have long-lived storms that stay tropical storm force, maybe flirt with category one. So um, I also just try to remind people of that, too, that longevity does not always equate to intensification. Ashley Gann, Amanda Holly here with us, of course, on Tracking the Tropics, uh, wrapping up this episode. Ashley, before we let you go, our featured meteorologist today, joining us from CBS 42 in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, what are you going to be watching for in the next several days, next week here, as far as the trio of storms here, really focusing, of course, on 99L? Yeah, 99L is going to be our biggest one, and really because it could be an impact to our viewers locally, not only in central Alabama, but we have quite a few viewers that have vacation homes down in Alabama and the western panhandle of Florida. So it's a coastline that we know geographically very well. We know those impacts well. So our messaging, our key messaging over the next several days will be really focusing on the direction of the storm. We, we like to give updates as frequently as possible through our social media and online on our, our cbs42.com. Because again, we want to make sure that everybody has those resources, those tools in their toolbox to make the best decisions for themselves and their families to stay out of harm's way, basically. The one benefit to tracking tropical systems, unlike tornadoes, is that we can see them coming. We have more time to plan and prepare. And I, I've always preached that preparedness is the key to true safety in the long run. So 99 is going to be our big, uh, big storm to watch. And, you know, fingers crossed, we always say this, hopefully it weakens and it may become just a moot point at the end of the day, but it will be one to watch for sure because it's something that we need to take seriously as it emerges into the Gulf of Mexico and, and with some potential strengthening there with some of our models. Will it be something? Will it be nothing? Meteorologists like question. Ashley, Amanda, yes. they're going to be monitoring the models as they come in here over the next several days. Of course, in lockstep here with the National Hurricane Center as far as the latest that we get here on all the systems that we track over the course of the Atlantic hurricane system uh, season. As, as a reminder, Ida is up next on our alphabet of lists or alphabet of names that we have here uh, for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. This wraps it folks for our uh, Wednesday episode here of tracking the tropics. We're always live here Wednesdays, two o'clock Eastern, one o'clock central on whatever app website or social media platform that you're watching on every episode. We take questions. This is a bit of an extended episode just because we had so many great questions coming in here from our, our audience here, our track in the tropics, super fans, as we call them here in the Facebook live comment section, we're going to monitor 99 L and, we're not just live on Wednesdays here. We're also live whenever you need to know about a particular system and its development. If there's an update that you need to know about, we're here live with our entire team here in Tampa, Florida, as well as all the meteorologists that we have as far as of Next Star Nation joining us like from Birmingham, Alabama. Ashley Gann joining us there from CBS 42. We have meteorologists on standby really across the United States ready to tap into their expertise and their experience to let us know where these storms could be headed and how strong they're going to be. 
become. So we are back, of course, Wednesday, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, or sooner, depending on, of course, the activity that you see here in the center of your screen. But for Ashley Gann, Amanda Holly, I'm J.B. Buno. Thanks so much for joining us here, folks, on Tracking the Tropics. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.